Let's create a test with a loop statement. A loop is useful to add to a test that needs to repeatedly run through a set of actions. We're going to first define the loop using architect to create the test and then show you how to edit the loop from the test detail and slider view pages. First, let's create a test using architect. Once the recording has started, I'm going to click on this item to add it to my order. And I'm going to make a purchase of 10 of these items. But instead of recording this click action multiple times in the test, I'm now building a loop to repeat that action for me. I'm going to show you a great example to identify how your app should behave if something goes out of stock. I'm going to do a few extra things here that you typically do in a test. Verifying that the image is here, doing a hover because I can't actually get to the price because we have some items in the way. When I add the hover action, it's going to tell the app to hover there and click so I can grab the price. We then grab this price so we can reference it again later with some custom JavaScript expression. And now I'm going to hit the back button, which is going to navigate me back to the main page where I'm making the purchases from. Now that I've gotten all that info, we're ready to start building the loop. Let's move architect out of the way since it's blocking the cart. And we'll start by adding a custom weight. I'm using this custom weight because my application under test is slow. The smart weight feature will add a weight to the page to fully load it without requiring a specific time to be hard coded. Now let's add a quick verification to check that the count is correct. Every time we add an item to the cart, we want the count total to go up as well. I'm adding 10 items of the same type to the cart, so I'm going to change this to fce.iteration. This will tell that verification to verify the count based on the number of times the loop iteration has run. That means once the loop runs once, the count goes up to one, and it verifies that the count is one. Now I'm going to add that item to the cart. First, I'm going to do a hover so that it'll appear for me. And then I'm going to click add to cart, which completes everything that's going on in our loop. We add this loop last because it's really a container of actions. So we're putting all of the appropriate actions into the loop. Since I wanted to run 10 times, now I'm going to select all of the actions that I want to include in that loop. Once the loop is created, I'm going to do one more thing here to verify based on the total items in the cart. To do this, I'm going to click verify where it says $830, but we're going to manipulate the $830 because once my loop has run 10 times, it's not going to be $830 anymore. It's going to be $8,300. So I'm just going to make this dynamic based on what's expected. We kept this example simple so that you can see what happens when we add a bit of JavaScript magic to this. So now that this is ready, I'm going to save the test. Now let's see what the test looks like when it runs. The test is run on the functionized test cloud, which means that a clean virtual machine is spun up at runtime and you can watch the live running test. Let's show you how this test runs so you can see how a loop behaves. As you can see, the count is going up from two to three and it continues to go up. Also, the dollar value continues to go up as well. Now that the test is passed, I can edit it to make changes and add some custom code. Let's look at the amount of iterations this test has run. Look at what the dollar amount should be and make sure it's correct based on every item that is added. There are all sorts of different use cases that you can use to insert custom code. So this is just one example and I'm pasting this in here for efficiency.
Let's grab the action ID from the step that I want to reference for the price. So we'll go down to that step, action 1.6, and copy the action ID from the UI. I'm referencing the $830, which is the price of the single item. And I'm saying take that $830 and compare it against how many times a loop ran. Then how much the cart should be valued based on the number of iterations that were run. To do this, I'm actually creating a variable in this custom code. There is an alternative to creating the variable through the UI of architect. The variable is declared here using fce.local.carttotal. So this variable is created on the fly. And we're pasting in the action ID that I copied from the UI. Lastly, I'm going to add another snippet of JavaScript in the last action. Instead of comparing while the loop is running and saying, hey, tell me what the total is every time the loop runs, now I'm actually adding up the total items in the cart and asking it to check if it equals what I expect. This is valuable since once conditionals comes out, I can say pass the test with $8,300 if there's 10 items in the cart or it can equal a different price if there's a different number of items in the cart besides 10. So if we think of a real world scenario where an item can go out of stock, we want the app to prevent me from adding these items to the cart. We still want that test to pass though, but it could be flexible based on certain conditions that could change every time. So it gives you that extra amount of control over your tests and it allows you to build in logic to avoid things like the pesticide paradox so that you're not running the test with the same data every single time. Now that I've made that change, let's run this test again. When I run it again, you're going to see it do an additional verification when the test runs. You'll notice that the test is running as it was before, but this time using some additional information. You can see the cart total going up and see the custom code action passes because the total in the cart matches what I expect it to be. And that's how you use loops in your test.